So we've got our rendering, and now it's time for us to take advantage of uh, what we know to try and get this chisel cutter to render a little easier. So we're going to make a new module just to sort of verify that everything's working the way we want. And we're just going to call this cut. Okay. We're going to try and simplify this cutter so that it's no longer requiring all of the embodiment of a chisel since we're just working with CAD. So first thing we're going to do is comment out our animal head. We don't need that. And then what we want is to actually see what our chisel cutter looks like so we can emulate it, uh, make a copy of it. All right, so there's, there's what our cutter looks like. And we've got it set to a 30 degree angle. And we want to be able to make something that has the exact same kind of effect, but um, with a totally different application. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all the variables that we passed before, because those are things we need. And then what we're going to do is start to introduce a different way about thinking about the geometry. And so we're going to basically destroy all the conventions we had before. We're going to make a cylinder, and its height is going to equal our width. And its radius is going to be equal to 1 over 2. And it's only going to have three faces. So we're going to make basically a triangle. So when we render that, we got to call the file, right? So uh, cut as a program. Let's pass three pieces of information: length, which is 15, or sorry, width, which is 15, length, which is uh, currently 100. I believe that will change, and our angle, which is 30. Okay. And that should be a semicolon. There we go. So now if you look very closely, we have a triangle. And the only problem with that is our triangle is uh, not in the same orientation as our other triangle. So the first thing we're going to have to do is lay it over on its side. And I'm just guessing here, but maybe in the y-axis. There we go. So now we have our triangle sort of in line with our other triangle, right? but it's off-center. So we're going to resolve that by just telling the cylinder that center equals true. And all of a sudden we're back in business. All right, everything's centered. So here's where it gets tricky. We need to start passing it information and we want to scale our triangle so that it's similar to the triangle we had before. So um, just be careful. You don't want to put zero comma zero comma zero here. If you do that, um, it just sort of makes your object disappear into oblivion. So we need to scale it in the length function, right? So we need to scale this by length, x-axis by length. And now our triangle is very tall, like super tall. And um, that's because we're passing it such a large number. So we'll pass it a more reasonable number, like maybe 10. There we go. So we have something that makes sense, but now we want this value here, this increment of 10, to produce an angle that is, in fact, uh, representative of the 30 degree angle we'd like. And so, uh, I don't know if you remember your math, but we're going to have to look at the axes. So we have this, this length here, right, which is the... Um, <laughs> the second longest leg, so this would be the hypotenuse and the angle we're trying to find. So if we're trying to get this angle, which is 30, right, we have the um, opposite over the hypotenuse. So we're looking at sine of angle. That should be 30. So if it's not 30, we need to consider what we're doing wrong. This is function times link. There we go. So now we have our 30 degree angle. And you can test that by just moving it up or down. Uh, 
And then just make sure when you're moving it in the axes, uh, what you're doing makes sense in your, your world. So because we have a rotate function, all of a sudden where we put translate matters. Okay. So we're going to go up here. Just see if that'll bring us up in Z. And it's a bit high. We don't need to be that high. So maybe down five. There we go. So now we can verify that our 30 degrees is in fact 30 degrees. And we've got a nice little cutter function. Um, you can leave the translate function there, but obviously it is relative to length. So if you want it parametric, it should be length over two. Um, might be appropriate, but then what I would do is I would test that out to make sure that as you do your design, um, your object is still cutting where you think it's supposed to cut. Okay, so now we have our cut function, and we can block out our chisel cut, like so. And then we can actually go into our file, and as we were calling chisel cutter, right? Let's just um, let's just take a look at how that affects animal head. So we're going to just block out cut, and we know we passed it three variables: 15, 20, and 30. Okay. And let's go over to chisel cutter. And we'll just render the whole thing. So it's still calling the old function. And if we change one of these to cut, and I believe this number was actually supposed to be 20, let's take a look at the distinction between the chisel cutter and our cut. Okay, so as we zoom back out, we can see that we're using a lot of rendering time on, on one side and very little on the other. So now we know we can pass cut to everything. And just remember that the length is much shorter, not 100, because we don't need a chisel handle. We just need a cut. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing over here, change it to 20, and get rid of all these extra letters that we weren't using. So now we know we're cutting the mouth. And the rendering time has gotten significantly faster. Um, so that's what we want. So we're just going to save this. Pass mark 5. And then we'll move on to the butcher.